Yo, what's up guys? I'm Grandmaster Shaman and welcome back to Flower Paradise. And today we have another episode of our Sakura Fox adventure. As you can see, in the last episode I talked about just adding some some things. I have I have some cat ears and I have these gloves. Just because just because I thought it would be funny. I thought it'd be funny. And don't ask me why I have them. But uh yeah. Uh here we go. <clears throat> Make sure you guys hit that like button for me. That would be greatly appreciated. I'm just saying that would be pretty nice. Pretty nice. Alright, you guys ready to see what happens? <clears throat> Junie throws her stick to one side. She reaches out with one arm to catch me, but it's too late. I stumble backwards, laying on the ground in an elegant heap. My rear is stuck up in the air, my tail twitching while my head is pressed against the dirt. <laughs> I spit a mouthful of grassy saliva onto the ground, then haul myself into a sitting position. My hair is tangled and my, my face is covered in smuts and dirt. What an inauspicious end to the first training session with Junie. It's a really heckin' embarrassing. Oh, we don't get an actual scene. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> I guess it doesn't matter who trains me. I'm a terrible fighter through and through. Oh no, you didn't do that badly, Makoto. Really? Is that your honest opinion? Well, uh... Mm. Junie glances to one side. Her lower lip trembles, her shoulders shake. Then with a loud snort... <laughs> Junie pile and bursts into peals of laughter. Gee, thanks. I'm sorry, Makoto. It's just the look on your face. It's too precious. I know you tried hard, but... <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. I had to pull myself to my feet, trembling uneasily, and wipe a few clods of dirt off from my cheek. Some instructor you are. This is precisely why I didn't want to fight with you in the first place. I knew this would happen. I'm so clumsy. It's okay, Makoto. We can't all be good at everything. I wasn't very good when I first started training either. Junie attempts to flatter my injured ego. Might be more effective if she had been sniggering about my failure less than five seconds prior. As is, however, her words smack of, of, of insincerity. I know she's trying to cheer me up, but... You said you were a child when you first started training. Yes, and? I'm not a child. I'm 25, for goodness sake. 25 and I only have one lousy tail. I can't use magic. I can't use weapons. I'm such a screw-up. Hey now, don't be like that. You did your best, and I'm proud of you. Things might not have concluded in a satisfactory way, but it isn't the end of the world. There's always tomorrow. Tomorrow? That's right. You can stay with me as long as you want, and I'm not going to go anywhere. I'll support you no matter what happens, so it's too early to give up on yourself. I believe in you even if you don't. Believe in the me that believes in you. But we're virtual strangers. Like virtual as in you guys are virtual characters? I mean, I guess technically, you know, right? What's all this ill-found confidence coming from? I, I don't know. It's just a hunch is all. A hunch? No matter how lacking your skills may be right now, I know that you're not the sort of person to give up. You can do it. I'm sure you can. If you put your mind to it, you can do anything. You just need to keep doing your best. The next day, Junie trains me in the meadow again. Of course, I fall spectacularly and I end up with a few bruises. I'm a little sore about that, in more ways than one, but I'm so grateful Junie's been letting me stay with her for so long. That's why, a little after dinner, I decide to do something nice for Junie. I hope it works out. Hey Makoto, what are you doing? Baking. I, I can see that, but why? Because I want to help you. You've done an awful lot for me, so I want to thank you for all your kindness. I refuse to- you refuse to grope my boobs, so this is the only way I think of repaying you. I, that is very kind of you, Makoto, but... Junie surveys the mixing bowl in my hands cautiously. What are you baking exactly? Apple pie! Uh, I see. Now I'm curious. Have you ever baked before, Makoto? No, never! Ohana always cooks for me. I see. Junie's frown grows deeper still. Why is she looking at me like that? Just be careful, okay? I don't want you cutting yourself or getting burnt. 
I'll be fine, Junie. What do you take me for? A clumsy fox girl who's always falling over and making a mess. That was just one time. Okay, two time. Or, or maybe a three time thing. Talk about putting my best foot forward. But I'm not completely worthless. This is just a pie. How hard can it be? You've got... You've just got to follow the ingredients, throw the ingredients together, mix them all up. It's so simple, even a failure for a fox girl who with one tail like me could do it. Oh, you sure sound passionate about this project. I'll not bother you then, but is there a reason why you chose to make apple pie? A fruit salad would have been much simpler to make, and that doesn't involve any ovens. I guess you're right, but I wanted to make you something a little nicer, sides. I hold the mixing bowl I hold the mixing bowl in my chest, stirring the flour and eggs together with a wooden spoon, pilfered from Junie's kitchen. You like sweet things, don't you? Apple pie is one of your favorites. Uh, oh, did I say that? I I don't know, I guess you must have. I mean that almost gives it away, you know. If, if you guys didn't know that sh that, you know, Junie's like, I had a friend that looked just like you when I was a kid. Weird how that works. Maybe she even told me about her favorite foods during the festival. I can't quite recall her exact conversation. Oh well, um, it's not like that's overly important. I need to keep working on this pie. I thought cooking would be simple enough, but it's pretty exhausting. This bowl feels heavy and these ingredients are pretty hard to mix. Is it just me or this eggy, floury concoction thickened up way too fast? It's almost like quicksand. I don't mean to pry, Makoto, but the consistency of your pastry looks a bit strange. That's how it's supposed to look. I'm just following the recipe. What recipe? I, uh, a recipe that Ohana gave me. Don't worry, Junie. It'll be fine. This is how fox girls cook. Really? Junie's brow creases. Are you sh Are you sure you don't want to add a dash of water to the mixture? It might help soften things up. It's fine, Junie. You don't need to worry. I know what I'm doing is all under control. I've already screwed up so many, so much over the last few days. I can't afford to fail at my cooking endeavor, too. Then Junie really will think I'm a loser. I just want to make her happy. I'm doing this for her sake, but the bowl is really heavy, and my hands are slippery with egg yolk. I can't keep a hold of it any longer. It's sliding from my grasp. Hey, Makoto, watch out. Ah! I reach out in desperate, frantic attempt to catch the bowl, but... Huh? I trip over something. Ow. To be a little... To be more precise, I trip over Junie. The... Oh, boy. <laughs> the bowl of poorly mixed ingredients falls on the floor. So do Junie and I. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. There it is. This is a great... Great picture. Look at, look at her face. She's, like, annoyed, but also kind of, like, okay with it. And, of course, you got the, of course, you got the boobs, like, plastered together. And her, her strap falling over. And, of course, you've got mixing stuff everywhere. God, what I would give to be Makoto right now. I just want to be Makoto. She's just like what I want to be, like, look at as a human being. Her personality is pretty similar to mine. She's a clumsy fuck up that, you know. But she's adorable. I'm not adorable, but, you know. We collapse in a heap on the ground. Junie sprawled, legs open, on our chest pushed up together. Junie's silky blonde hair, which she cares for tr tender tenderly, is messed and rumpled. A flew globs of spilled dough stuck to her cheeks. Her face is flushed and her chest rises and falls with short, surprised breaths. Our bodies are pressed so closely together I can hear her heartbeat beneath the fabric of her clothes. I thought Junie was pretty, pretty from a distance, but looking at her now, she's not just pretty, she's beautiful. Uh, oh no. Junie glances around the kitchen, her brow furrowed. The mixing bowl is upturned, dough spilled all over the kitchen and all over us, too. At least the bowl didn't break. It was made of sturdy material, built to last, and it was able to resist the inexorable pull of gravity. I guess that's one positive about this rotten situation. But all my hard work was totally ruined, and we can't eat that pastry now. It's gone. Or is it? Hey, Makoto, I'm sorry, but you're kind of heavy. Could I ask you to move? I don't reply. I'm too busy staring at Junie's face, studying her with newfound intensity. I should be bummed about my ruined attempt at cooking. I guess I kind of am, but it almost seems worthwhile somehow if it means I can spend a few moments snuggled up with Junie like this. I can smell her distinct aroma, tantalizing like flowers in a glassy meadow. 
I've only been with her a couple of days, but it feels like I've known her my whole life. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, Makoto, hey Makoto, what are you? Uh, oh, she's so good. Oh, man. Ah. Uh. Problem is, Makoto and I are very similar. <laughs> I would totally do the same thing. Junie breaks off, her eyes widening with surprise as I draw my tongue against her cheek. There's a glob of dough stuck to her fair skin, and I felt obliged to lick it off. I mean, it is my fault it got there. M Makoto, what are you doing? Cleaning you up. I, I, I can see that, but you don't need to do that. I could have just, I, I, I could just have a bet. Shh. I press one finger against Junie's soft, glossy lips, effectively silencing her. This is all my fault, so I'll take responsibility. I might be useless, I might be a useless, no good fox girl, but I don't want to cause you any problems. So let, you helped me a lot, so I should help you, it's only fair. My tongue pokes out of my lips once more. I slide it along Ju Junie's cheek, lapping up against the dough. Though the consistency of the dough needs some work, it doesn't taste all that bad. It's sweet, and I sigh as I let its flavor dissolve across my tongue. Not bad. You mean the pastry? Th th that's right. For a first attempt, it wasn't that awful. But maybe it only tastes good because I'm licking it off you. You mean... Y you mean you want to lick food off, off of my naked skin? Isn't that a little lewd? Hmm? What's the problem? Do you not... Do you like it when I lick you? Uh, she totally does. She totally does. I pressed my body against Junie's more snugly until there was isn't an inch of space between us. I felt beads of sweat beginning to prickle my skin. My tail swishes. Why do I feel so hot? Oh, is she in heat? Oh, God. Makoto, you, I... Junie blinks at me, her eyes larger than ever before. Her face is painted with an adorable pink blush, which makes her look significantly younger than she actually is. Oh, shit. I didn't know I could scroll down. That's cool. Hmm. You may be a knight for eight years, but you don't know anything at all about the human body. Maybe I could teach. Teach me? That's right. I could show you all sorts of interesting things, my cute little knight. <laughs> Junie, squ Junie squirms beneath me, pinned between the kitchen counter and my own body. Even if she wanted to pull away, she could. I suppose she could always push my body off with hers with force, but one of her arms is wedged beneath my side, and it doesn't look like she has the strength to shift me. Maybe she wants this just as much as I do. Maybe. Have you ever done anything like this before, Makoto? No, why do you ask? You seem so confident about all of this, but as for me, my heart is racing. That's okay, my heart's racing too, but I think that's only natural. It is? Yeah, it's because you're so pretty and I just can't help myself. I want to eat you up, my adorable Junie. M Makoto. It doesn't matter that I'm inexperienced. When I'm with you, it feels so right. I don't want to let you go. I lick Junie's cheek again, and she whimpers. Her body feels so good beneath mine. It's all I could do to stop myself from tearing her clothes off and reverencing her in the kitchen on the... <laughs> Jesus. Okay, I'm not assertive. I'm very much not assertive. So that's very much not like me. I could not do that. I could totally, you know, lick her cheek and stuff and, and probably, you know, the rest of it. But I'm not that assertive. I want her. I want her more than I've ever wanted anything in my whole life. I don't know if it's possible for me to feel so strongly about another person. I push my body closer to Junie's, my mouth hovering over her own. I could lean in and kiss her. I want to kiss her, but... But, all of a sudden, clarity returns. I see myself as a third party might, straddling Junie's leg, my bust pushed up against her own. I'm acting completely out of control, just like a feral fox in heat. This isn't who I am. I'm the daughter of Himiko, the leader of the Yamatai Fox Girls. If I push myself on, on Junie now, she might never forgive me. I need to get a grip. I, I... Yes, Makoto, what is it? Crap, Junie's soft, sensuous voice is nothing, uh, doing nothing for my self-control, but I've got to stop this madness somehow. I don't want to do something I grow to regret. And so it is. With supreme self-control, I pull myself away from my companion. I get to my feet, brushing the pastry from my hair and clothes, then bow my head. 
I I'm really sorry, Junie. I don't know what came over me. I must have hit my head harder than I thought when I took a tumble in the forest, because I wasn't thinking straight. I'm really sorry for screwing things up. I hope you can forgive me. Hey, Makoto, wait. Junie calls out for me, but I'm t it's already too late. I turn on my heels, open the front door, and bolt out from her house. Junie's touch, her voice, her smell. It's all too much for me to handle. If I stay here any longer, I really will go mad. Oh, jeez, this is the worst. I trudge through the undergrowth, my ears drooping, tail deflated. I've been tra uh, traipsing through the forest for an hour or so, and the sun's already set. It's dark, and the cool wind makes me shiver. I can't believe I jumped on Junie like that. What's with me? I'm acting like a wild beast. I slap my cheeks with my hand and attempt to chastise myself, but that it not that it does much good. It's too late to recant my poor behavior behavior now. That won't help me repair my relationship with Junie. I've already ruined everything. I wonder if she'll be mad at me. I wouldn't be surprised if she was. I sexually assaulted her and I've only known her for a few days. Not that it'd make things better if I don't known her my whole life, but Junie might be nice, but I don't know if she's that nice. Would she be able to forgive me? I sigh. She was the only person in the village who was willing to be my friend, but now I look up at the sky. I can see the moon through the grapes and the trees. It shimmers mysteriously like a pearl. I sigh and kick at the grass. It does me little. It does little to flatten my mood, but at least the feeling of soil beneath my feet helps me feel grounded. I'm being ridiculous. Why couldn't I keep my hands or my mouth to myself? I've never felt this way about any bu anyone before. So why? It doesn't make sense. For some reason, when I saw Junie on the floor, her clothes rumpled and her cheeks stained with batter, she looked so irresistible I couldn't stop myself. I, I like her. I hardly know her, but I like her. Jeez. I run a hand through my hair. Am I so desperate for company that I'll jump on the first hot girl I see? That's pretty pathetic. There's no way to repay Junie for her kindness either. I know I should go back and apologize, anxious though I am, but... Wait. There's just one problem with this little plan of mine. Where am I, anyway? I whirl about, completely at a loss. When I was left Junie's home, I didn't have a solid plan in my head. I just kept walking without any regards to direction. I wanted to get some fresh air to clear my lungs. I thought it'd be good if I put a bit of space between myself and the object of my desires. Not that Junie's an object, that's just a figure of speech. But I think I might have been a little too effective in that regard. Now I have no idea where I am. How am I going to find my way back? This is just great. I'm completely lost. I'm going to wander these woods forever and get mauled to death by a bear. I'm too young and cute to die. Please have pity on me. <laughs> and if, and as if in direct response to my plaintive cries, huh? I hear a rustle in the undergrowth. It sounds like footsteps, loud and menacing. Something's coming towards me. This is the worst day ever. <laughs> I crouch on the ground and place my hand over my head. My ears flatten on my scalp and my whole body twitches. I'm so afraid I'm starting to tear up, damn it. I'm sorry for invading your habitat, Mr. Bear. I mean you no harm. I'm just a weak, useless fox girl with only one tail. I won't hurt you, so please don't eat me. Let me live. I'm never got, gonna rub Junie's boobs before I die. <laughs> hmm, what's this about Junie's boobs? Uh, I blink, still sniffling, and draw my arms away from my head. Slowly, tremendously, I look up. My eyes meet, not with a hungry bear, yellow and filled with rage, but... I recognize you. Your name is Fallon, right? Yeah, that's right. I recognize you, too. You're the naughty fox girl from before. Uh, bingo. What gave it away? Oh, one of two things. The tail for a start. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess it stands out a little, huh? Just a touch. Fallon snorts, but she doesn't look particularly angry with me. She's not like all the villagers. Cheat. What was his name again? Unwin? who was particularly a apoplectic with rage when he saw me. Fallon seems distinct, distinctly more chill. Well, chill as a woman can be, being that tall and muscular. I've never seen a woman more swole than her before. She's like a bodybuilder. Fallon isn't holding a weapon like she was at the festival, but it doesn't matter. With hands like that, she can totally trust, crush my skull. Hey, you haven't hurt yourself, have you? Uh, no, I'm fine. Why are you crouching on the ground? I was worried you'd hurt your ankle. Um, I'm okay. I was just a little afraid. Of me? No, I, I thought you were a bear. Do I look like a bear to you? 
with a huge body like that, maybe. That was the response I wanted to get, but I'm not sure if Fallon would appreciate it. If I offend her, she might really crush me to death. No, 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 you're definitely a woman. A very handsome woman, with incredible biceps. You're not really my type, but I'm sure a lot of guys like this kind of thing. A lot of women, too. <laughs> Crap, what am I talking about? I'm more nervous than I thought. Fortunately, Fallon doesn't look mad. Instead, she only sighs. Do you ever stop talking? Sometimes when I'm sleeping. Good grief. A sigh. Anyway, I'll help you. Take my hand. Uh, thanks. I accept Fallon's outstretched hands and rise to my feet. My butt's dusted in the air, and so is my tail. I wipe my hands behind my head, trying to get rid of myself of the worst of the muck. I don't want to look like I've had an accident. That'd be way too embarrassing. So I take... So I take it you've been staying with Junie. That's right. She carried me to her home and cleaned me up and dried my clothes. She's been very, very helpful to me. Jeez, that Junie. Fallon frowns. She looks displeased, but not angry. It's kind of hard to get a read on this woman. I don't understand her at all. Does she hate me or not? If there only there was an easy way to tell. Junie's always too damn nice to everybody. That's why I like her, but I can be quite burdensome. Burdensome? I pout my hands on my hips. Are you are you saying I'm a burden? You know that you are. Fallon flicks my forehead and I recoil, wincing. Hey now, don't be such a baby. I barely touched you. Maybe not in your eyes. But those fingers are, of yours are thicker than sausages. You better watch out, lady, because you caused me some serious harm. If I hurt you, I'm sorry. That wasn't my intention. I don't dislike you at all, really. This is just complicated. You're telling me. I don't really get this at all, but... Didn't you try and attack me the other day? I thought you wanted me dead. I didn't really wish to harm you. I was only carrying out Unwin's or orders. I felt bad about it, but... But what? You think you can say sorry and I'll forgive you for pointing a spear in my face? That wasn't very nice, you know. That's no way to treat a lady. Hey, I'm a lady too, remember? Besides, I wasn't proud of what I did. That's why when I heard about you cry in the forest, I went to help you. I couldn't figure out... Forgive myself for threatening you so. Especially when you had no way to fight back. Junie was right. I was being cruel. I don't expect you to forgive me, but I'll apologize all the same. Believe me when I say I wish you no harm. Talk about sudden character developments. The, this backstory is especially rich coming from a side character without a character portrait. What was that? Oh, nothing. Really? Okay. I'm just glad you've seen the light. You humans might think I'm I'm scary because of my ears and tail, but I'm not a threat. I'm, I'm a total failure. I couldn't hurt you if I wanted to, which I don't. I just wanted to be friends. Friends, huh? That's a sweet sentiment, if somewhat naive. Is that why you came to our village? That's right. I wanted to learn more about you humans so I could understand you. I've always been told that humans are wicked and evil. I wanted to prove my teacher wrong, but maybe she had a point. I see. Then in that case, I must apologize. I doubt I made the best first impression. Not really, no. I can see now that you're not an evil monster, Erwin claims. I don't really want to cause you any grief, but... Fallon's face darkens. At the present, the villagers of Warren believe that you have perished. I told Unwin that I pursued you in the forest, then killed you. No one is looking for you, but if any of the villagers were to find you, it would cause a f fur furor. Unwin would send out his men, and they would stop at nothing to kill you. Talk about being popular, huh? I don't know what I did to deserve all this attention. This is all happening because you're different from us, that's all. You've done nothing to warrant this, but if you stay here, you'll be putting yourself in danger. If Unwin learns Junie has been sheltering you, she will be at risk too. I don't want either of you to get hurt, so, though it may sound harsh, I really do want you to think it would be better if you left. Ah, so that's what you wanted to tell me, huh? That's right. Don't take it too personally. I only want to ensure your safety. You're not a bad person, and you don't deserve to suffer. That's what I think. I would stake my life on it. That's very nice of you, but this whole time I've been nothing but a bother. Junie sacrificed a lot to help me, and you're even sacrificing your place in this village by covering for me. You're so nice, but I'm just taking advantage of your kindness. I'm so selfish. This whole time I've done nothing but cause problems for everyone. Maybe I am wicked. Hey, Makoto. Fallon awkwardly rests her one of her large hands on my trembling head. Don't cry. They're there. I didn't want... But at that moment...
Fallon, what are you doing? Uh. <laughs> Fallon, what are you doing? I thought I told you to leave Makoto alone. Huh? J Junie, th this isn't what it looks like. Junie, what are you doing here? I came here to look for you. I was so afraid when you ran off, but you didn't... You don't need to worry now. Junie points her sword at... Junie points her sword at Fallon. It's slippery tip sharp, deadly in the... Uh, silvery tip sharp and deadly in the moonlight. I'm, I'm here for you. I won't let that horrible woman lay a finger on you. H horrible? Junie, I wasn't... Silence! I don't want to hear your excuses. You've terrorized poor Makoto more than enough already. Can't you see how much she's been... She's shaking? You made her cry, you moron. I expected better from you. You always act like you're so kind and understanding, but I suppose that's nothing more than a mask to hide your ugly, twisted prejudices. N no, Junie, wait, you don't understand. So you're trying to talk back to me. Don't you... Uh, do you want me to strike you down? I don't want to hurt anybody. Least of all, a woman I once considered my friend. But if you refuse to listen, I'll be left with no choice. Uh, hey, Junie? What is it, Makoto? Is there something you want to say? That's right. Well, um, Fallon wasn't trying to hurt me. Huh? She, she wasn't? But I saw her reaching out for you. You were doubled over, crying. You looked so scared. Well, I, I was a little sad. I still am, actually. But I wasn't scared. Fallon was trying to comfort me, that's all. She found me in the woods after I got lost, and she helped me to my feet. She told me that she didn't want to hurt me, and she said she was sorry for threatening me before. Uh, oh, I, I see. Junie exhales, then places her sword back into her scabbard with a dull metallic clank. So that's what happened. That's right. I'm not lying, I promise. Fallon was very helpful. Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry, Fallon. I hope you can forgive me for jumping to conclusions. I was just so worried. It's all right. I understand how you feel. You've always been quick to protect those in need, haven't you? It's what I like about you. You're a nice person, Junie. I can't fault you for taking this girl in. But surely you know how dangerous this is. If Unwin finds out, he'll be angry. I don't intend for him to find out. Then you mean to keep this girl here, despite the obvious danger you'll be putting yourselves in. I can understand you've been a cavalier about your, uh, cavalier about your own safety, but what about hers? What if she gets hurt? Well, that... Here, Junie falters. She looks at the ground, her eyes half-lidded. I-I'll take care of her. I don't doubt that you'll try, but what if you can't? The whole village is rallies against you. I doubt you'll be able to win. Junie bites her lower lip. I know you're right. I really shouldn't let her stay here. I'm being illogical. I don't understand what I'm doing myself, but for some reason I don't want her to go. Not so soon. Goodness. Fallon sighs. It seems the two of you have gotten pretty close in such a short space of time, too. I won't ask what you've been doing exactly, but what do you want, Makoto? Can you really stay with Junie despite the danger you'll inevitably face? Now that's a difficult question. I really have no idea. Can I justify staying in Junie's home and Junie's life knowing what I know now? If my present will put her in danger, surely it'd be better if I went back home. That'd be the best thing to do, but if I return to Yamatai, there's a high chance I'll never see Junie ever again. Our friendship, our relationship, or whatever you want to call it will all be over. What should I do? Oh my god, an actual choice! Okay, well, we're gonna save. Okay, there we go. Oh. Well, I think we gotta go with the it's selfish, but I wanna stay here line. I know it, that one's so dangerous, though. It's hard to say what the right decision is because, like, both of them are not bad decisions, theoretically. I mean, you look at it, and if you go back to Yamatai, there's a chance you'll never see her again, and you'll get scolded, but there's also a chance that she might come looking for you, and you might be able pardon, to live each their lives together somewhere else, maybe even in Yamatai. Maybe they'll accept her for who she is, who knows? But if they go back to the village, they're putting themselves in high danger, but they're guaranteed to be together for now. I know it sounds selfish, but even if it puts me in danger, even if it puts you in danger, I, I want to stay here. I don't know why, but I care about you, Junie, and I don't want us to ever be parted. Oh, Makoto. Junie's eyes soften. A soft smile plays about her lips. 
I don't want us to be parted either. I can't explain it myself, but my life would be very dull and gray without you in it. I like you a lot, and I won't let you go now. So saying, Junie scoops me into her arms, and I rest my head against her soft chest, enveloped by her warmth, kindness, and love. Junie's body does really does feel good. It smells good, too. She's perfect. She's so perfect, I... <laughs> it feels like I'm floating on a cloud. I never want to leave your arms, Junie. Oh, good. I'll nev I never want to let you go. You're just too adorable. Junie squeezes me in the about the middle, and I giggle, my tail twitching like a dog's. N no, you're the adorable one. No, you. You. Oh, they're the cutest couple of all time. Oh, they're just so adorable. Look at that. No, you're the cutest. No, you're the cutest. No, you're the cutest. <laughs> oh, they're so cute. Oh, jeez. Fallon watches dispassionately, her muscular arms folded. You two are so helpless. Don't you realize how much danger you're in? I, I know, but I don't care. If it's for Makoto's sake, I'd move mountains. Whoa, Junie, you just sounded so cool right now. Uh, oh, really? Junie grins, her expression coy. I, I guess I did, huh? All my years training as a knight must have paid off. <laughs> <laughs> Good gift. Give me a break. Fallon shakes her head. Well, don't come crying to me if the things don't pan out. I gave you a fair warning. I'm happy you two like each other so much, but as far as I can see, this can only end in tears. I really hope it doesn't. Please tell me it doesn't. After our little tete-a-tete -a -tete -a -tete in the woods, Junie walks me back home. It's a nice cool night, and we don't run into anybody else. We spend our... I walk linked together, hand in hand, my head nuzzled against Junie's shoulder. Every once in a while, Junie points out a cluster of stars in the sky. She seems to know what constellations are called and all the human legends attribute to them. We fox girls have our own names for the stars and our own stories. They differ greatly from the ones Junie tells me. We swap myth and legends as we walk, our paths illuminated by a flicker of fireflies. The wind rustles in the trees and the grass around my, about my feet stirs. It really is a beautiful night, and it's made more beautiful still by Junie's presence. I've only known Junie for a few days, but I feel like I could trust her with my life. We return home. Junie asks me if I'm hungry. Y you must be. You've been gone for such a long time, and you never got to eat the apple pie you made. Uh oh, that that is, I, um... My cheeks turn red when Junie mentions the accursed apple pie. I'd almost forgotten about that, too. I, I'm very sorry. I buy my head as far as I can in hopes that she'll properly convey my contr contrition. Is, is this the, fir the, the first night together and they totally love each other? I mean, uh, getting it. Junie's gonna be like, I'm totally fine with it. Alright, ready? Junie, for her part, looks amused by my display. She frowns, her arms folded. Why are you apologizing, Makoto? You didn't do anything wrong. Oh, but that isn't true. I made a whole lot of mistakes today. First, I knocked that apple pie on the floor, and I got you all dirty. Junie's clothes are still a little dirty, actually. She cleaned herself up as best she could, but I can see a few dark stains around the skirt and sleeves. She must have been from the apple pie. I guess she was so worried about me, she dashed out of the house to find me before she had a chance to change her clothes. I'm kind of flattered, I guess, but isn't that another point against my favor? I, I, I sullied your home, and I, I sullied your clothes, and... If that wasn't enough, I tried to make, take advantage of you. My heart was pounding, my head was spinning, and I, I didn't know what I was doing. I invaded your personal space like a total creep, and, and then, and then, I was afraid you'd be mad, so I ran away like a naughty kid. I'm the worst. I get on my hands and knees and rub my head against the wooden floor, my eyes beating with embarrassed tears. I, I'm sorry, Junie. I hope you can forgive me. Hmm, so that's why you ran away, is it? I did wonder. I'll admit, I was a little upset you dashed off like that. I ran after you, but I couldn't find you. Then I started to panic. I was afraid you'd gotten hurt, and I wouldn't be there to help you. That was scary. I don't think I'd ever been more terrified in my life. Junie sniffs. Now it looks like it's her turn to get emotional. Maybe Fallon's right. We really are idiots. Makoto, I I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. I just thought, after what I did, maybe you'd want a bit of space. I was acting pretty weird, after all. Yeah, you were. 
I whimper. My head is still rumbling against the floorboards. At this rate, I'm totally going to get bruises. You were behaving quite strangely, but I didn't hate it, you know. It... I stare up at Junie, eyes wide. Since I'm still prostrated on the floor, I got a pretty good view of <laughs> her skirt. Her panties. For a night, they're pretty cute. They're white, white and lacy. Part of them are translucent. Okay. Is she ready? Is that is that what is going on? She was like totally ready for this. She had this whole thing planned out. The way they cling to her butt is quite fetching too. But what am I thinking? Now it's totally not the right time to be guapping Junie's butt, no matter how adorable it is. Junie, wh what do you mean? I mean, um, Junie's fingers her, her hair shyly. When you pressed your body against mine, it felt a little weird, but it wasn't bad. I froze up because I was so surprised, but if you ever wanted to be intimate with me again in the future, then I, I wouldn't object. Uh, I, um, my mouth opens. I try to reply, but no sound comes out. I can't say anything. Oh, this is so cute. This is so cute. <laughs> this is too much for my dumb Foxborough brain to handle. A anyway, putting that to one side. Oh, anyway, putting that to one side. I'm not angry, so you don't need to bow to me. If anything, I'm relieved that you're all right. Now, won't you stand up? I don't want you to hurt yourself. Uh, oh, right, you're right. I got to my feet, my face flushed, my forehead hurts, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I do have a bruise. But if I don't look at it, it's almost like it doesn't exist. That's my handy-dandy solution to all life's problems. <laughs> now. Junie looks me up and down, her lips pursed. Your clothes have seen better days. They're all muddy. Uh, oh, yeah, you're totally right. I tried to wet my earthy butt down as best as it could after embarrassing tumble in the forest, but there's only so much my hands could do. I'm only human after all. Well, fox girl. If I was a human, I wouldn't have got so many scrapes all over the last few days. I can't let you walk around in clothes like that. You might get my house dirty. It's not like I'm saying this because I want to see your naked body. That's not the case, but... I think you should take your clothes off, Makoto. I see. You're, um, probably right. <laughs> There's nothing lewd about this at all, so it's totally fine. I'll take off my clothes. Uh, that's right. You do that. Junie watches, her face pink, as I wiggle my way out of my outfit. My clothes fall in a heap about my feet, discarded. Now I'm only wearing my bra and panties. It's not a particularly cold night. I feel goose flesh standing on my arms, all the same. Junie's seen me in underwear before, but as I expected... This is kind of embarrassing. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have been more considerate. No, no, it's fine. Don't worry. I'm not upset. Good, I'm glad. Judy sighs, relieves, and rests a hand against her chest. Now that I look at her, she's got pretty big boobs. But n no, be gone, wicked thoughts of mine. I should not besmirch <laughs> Judy with my lecherous eyes. Though, come to think of it, she said she didn't mind when I licked that apple pie off of her earlier, did she? Then in that case... I, um... Don't want you to feel embarrassed, so I'll take mine off too. I mean, I don't have much of a choice. My clothes are dirty too. It's better to wash our clothes at the same time, so don't read too much into it, okay? Oh, that's what she meant by it freaking uh, translucent. It's like over here. So saying, Ju uh, Junie begins to strip. She first slides off her gauntlets, then her graves. She's they hit the ground with a dull clatter, glinting at the metallic light and the candlelight. Next to her skirt, then her armor about her breasts. Her breasts bounce and sway as she removes the protective coverings in a manner that's almost mesmerizing. Lastly, Junie shimmers out of her dark bodysuit and clings to her curves. She discards it upon the floor among the rest of her clothes, a little sad and crumpled about without a body to warm them. So, so, um... Junie blinks at me shyly, her hands folded together at the front. What do you think, Makoto? I, I don't say anything. My two eyes are too busy ro roving over Junie's body in a delicious trance. I drink in every inch of her body, her firm, plump thighs, her smooth, firm stomach, her large, round breasts. She's cute from head to toe and fluffy as a cloud. Her pear skin, dampled here and there with pink, looks incredibly inviting. She isn't covered with stray bits of apple pie anymore, but even so. Oishi. <laughs> How do I look? Delicious. <laughs> Best response. <laughs> Delicious. That's right. You look so cute, Ginny. I just, I, I can't hold back any longer. 
and then with a loud squeal, Kah! I throw myself at my adorable new friend. And with that, we're going to end this episode off. So thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I hope you guys did enjoy. Make sure you guys hit that like button down below for me because you already know your support's greatly appreciated. As well as leaving a comment in the comment section down below and subscribing so that way you can continue watching the brand new Sakura series show. Um, and we'll see you all next time.